You think she did that on purpose? Or was it just like, let me just add this part at the end for TikToks? Are songwriters writing for TikTok now? And that's what I was like, yo, if she did that, Intentionally kind of smart fucking genius kind of smart if you want to make great music that can go viral It's entirely possible. Some of y'all might not like how that sounds Creating music that goes viral, but trust me check out this clip And then we're gonna break down from our experience marketing music and taking it viral how you can keep your artistic integrity But still go viral at the same time check this clip out Caitlin has a new song with Connor Price called New Phone. New Phone, yeah. We've all heard the TikTok sound that's gone crazy viral, right? Yeah, cheap so ass, I, broke ass. Yeah, exactly. So I finally decided to listen to the full song on streaming. I got to like towards the end and I was like, damn, like where's that part? It was at the very end, end of the song. So you think she did that on purpose? Or was it just like, let me just add this part at the end for TikTok? Are songwriters writing for TikTok now? And that's what I was like, yo, if she did that, intentionally kind of smart fucking genius kind of smart all right shout out to one more time cast like dope clip and the observation is spot on because there are many artists who literally are just creating parts of their song for tiktok mm -hmm. not the whole song but just a little part put in a little work and in this case he's saying hey look they might have gotten to the end of the song and then just say hey, like in my outro let me throw a little sauce in there that yeah, we can throw, put on TikTok. Let me throw a little nod to you Which would be funny. Like, that's almost, like, that's, to me, that's a brilliant troll almost as an artist. It's like, no, well, let me throw this bullshit in here just for y'all who need it yeah. <laughs> to bring y'all to the song. I would love that. But, yeah. like, in terms of keeping your artistic integrity, because I know many of the artists, they don't even like that. I don't want to have to do that, right? at all it's like i don't want to make a song that's for tiktok maybe don't make the whole song for tiktok maybe just the a last 15 seconds <laughs> the purists i can just already hear them getting offended though it kind <laughs> of offends me a little bit too but at the same time like you still get to be creative with it it's still you it's your interpretation of it you're just kind of like molding your vision into a framework there's actually three options three approaches that you can take to going viral right and taking advantage of the algorithms but I'm gonna start with the ones you like the least and then we'll get down to the to the good stuff. All right. First of all, you can follow the formulas. There are formulas that you can observe. You listen to music. Uh, Tiogs was really good at this, all right? And basically hack your way to understanding what's a great formula that's gonna hit. Cause I know that they wanna dance to this or the BPMs or I'm saying certain types of words, how fast I start the song, right? Great. You can create music consistently for the algorithm but here's the problem when you create music for the algorithm and it fails it probably feels a lot worse as an artist mm -hmm. right oh yeah <laughs> it's like Ugh, i didn't even want to create that stuff sold right? my soul for nothing <laughs> <laughs> sold my soul for peanuts but then you got the next option right so realizing i don't have to create an entire song for that formula i could just create a moment Yes. Great, right? Yes. I do that for 10, 20 songs. Maybe one of those will pop eventually because I'm increasing my likelihood. That's one option. But here's another option. Option number two. I can say, I'm going to create whatever I want to create, but one out of 10, one out of 20 of the songs I create are going to be specifically for the algorithm. Right? And I'm just going to use that one to bring more attention to my, my catalog. All right, so you still do what you want to do in your artist bag, but every once in a while, you use that exercise to hopefully hack and use it as marketing. And hey, this is the way I look at it. And this isn't even the best option. Option number three is a, is a real thing as well for some of your artists. But this is the way I look at it. Do you not pay for marketing or running ads, right? True. You pay for marketing with influencers. True. You have all these ways that you spend money, and if you don't have much money, creating a song that has a potential to go viral or a part of a song that has a potential to go really viral organically, it's like a marketing cost that you have you get to forego. I don't gotta spend no money because I created something that could organically give me attention. Mm. What say you? What say I? I mean, you, you're, <laughs> not, you're not wrong. I just have never thought of it like that. But I don't think you're wrong in that. But. It's, I guess because it's such a hard thing to quantify, right? Like, ooh, I'm about to throw this TikTok viral sound at the end of my song. I wonder how much dollars I'm going to say. I've never thought of it like that. 
Just saying. I mean, you, <laughs> you can look at the, you know, what is it, um, the videos created to it, the views that you might get to that versus some of your other catalog. You could probably find a way to quantify it if you really wanted to. But I'm just saying mentally, for those who are struggling, right, I think you could think about it that way. If I just step out the bag for, you know, one out of ten songs and get over here, that's all it is. I'm just doing what I need to to help bring attention to the rest of my catalog that gets created however I want to get it created, right? So that's me as a pure artist. Okay, I can see that. And, and see, I think that's where a lot of the conversation around it from newer artists stems from is that most of them don't have a catalog yet, so they don't get that. Mm. Right, like, hey, this one song does not is not the only thing that represents you. Right. right, unless it is the only thing that represents you, then at that point you have a much bigger issue. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You know, like, and the only ones I would give some grace to is the point oh 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 one percent, where like their first one to three songs are the song that does that for them. Then I give them a pass because like you didn't you didn't get enough time to get that. But for the rest of you, it's like, bro, this is one song that gets to you know what I'm saying define you in this moment. But if you're smart with it and you flip it right then we won't even care or remember it, you know what I'm saying, five years from now. Like, I think about, like, Doja Cat's probably the best That's modern exactly what I was yeah, thinking, bro. Best yeah. modern example, bro. I like Moo. I wasn't a part of the internet hate at the time. I thought that shit was far. But the I video understood. helped. The, the video did help. And so and some other things. But now we are, what, three, four, five years removed from that moment? People don't even talk about Moo anymore. You know what I'm saying? Which is crazy yeah i think the reason that's the base uh best case study which is basically what you're saying but like to me it's like mind-boggling because one to your point she had a catalog already so there was something else that can define her so Mm -hmm. i remember seeing the video the the comments like oh my gosh she's actually talented looking at the comments because i already knew who she was and then i would go back and then you know i was already in my marketer bag so i was studying and people would be commenting yeah oh man i just found this who knew that she actually had talent da 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 because a lot of people would discover her from that but the fact that people are not talking about that song like that now mm-hmm. leaves no excuse to for anybody to have any fear of being stuck in a bubble unless you feel like your talent is limited there we go and the ability I, I to get I ain't over that home. I ain't because you. that song right there <laughs> like you don't get any more mimi and then wearing a cow outfit, bro, it doesn't get any more like TikToky. TikToky, comical. <laughs> I don't because TikTok technically wasn't even yeah, it. Wasn't like not, that blew yeah. up on YouTube, yeah, you're right, you're right? Right. But it doesn't even it doesn't get more like gimmicky. Yeah, there right? we go. There yeah. we go. Yeah. You don't get more gimmicky than that moment right there. And she did not get stuck in it because she had enough talent to overcome that moment in time. That's what I'm saying, bro. I didn't think he was going to say it, bro. I mean, come on, man. That one, bro. <laughs> I didn't think he was going to say it, man. Because that, that's what I think it comes down to, bro. I think the artists are afraid to attack it in that way. Deep down, you don't really believe. All right, it's two things, right? Either deep down, you don't really believe that your talent will overcome yeah. this scenario. Or you are afraid that we will, like... We will like your compromise more than we'll like you. Rats, I'm gonna take these glasses off, man. It's, but buddy done took me to church. That's some some pastoral bars out here. Let's talk about the fact that most artists fail to understand that it doesn't take forever to monetize your audience. We had an artist literally begin to take off and make twenty thousand dollars from his brand new audience in the same month. But how is that possible? It's because we're in a new era, baby. Yes, you want to continue to build a relationship over time, but the first time you make money from your audience can happen today if you understand the new age music marketing funnel for artists. So if you want to hear about this approach and how you can apply it to yourself, I made a completely free video to watch at www.nolabelsnecessary.com slash monetize. You got to make sure you put the www or if you're on YouTube, you can find the link in the description and check out how we help monetize artists for completely free. I promise I promise it'll completely change how you see things. That's what I'm saying. Think about, think about how gut wrenching has to be. Where you're like, man, I'm a real artist. I'm a real artist. I'm gonna I'm put my time, sweat, energy. It's just like the the, the Killboy clip, right? Like she was like, damn, I've been writing all this shit, and I go do the fucking Mike Karen for him, and this shit hit. She probably felt terrible in the moment. She's probably happy now because it's moving. But I, I can imagine in that moment, like seeing a real time reaction to. You know, what you artistically thought was better versus what you thought was artistically selling out. I can, I can imagine that's a tough pill to swallow. 
Gotcha. But then, like you said, man, if you have t- talent shines too, you know, like, I said, Doja Cat's the best example of gimmicky artists, but there have been others. You know, we all remember Young Thug in the dress. You know what I'm saying? We all remember, you know what I'm saying? Who else is a good example? Um, Prince. When he came out. Prince. Had the cheeks out. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, right, he did. He did have the cheeks out, man. <laughs> he did do that, man. But Prince Prince had enough talent that when you went home at night, the last thing on your mind was his cheeks. <laughs> I don't know if that worked out like you thought it would. <laughs> like the actual last thing? <laughs> All right, well, the furthest thing from your mind was his cheeks. There we go. There we go. That's a better way. <laughs> So I, I feel like it's a big thing, right? Like we've seen it. There have been multiple artists where like they, 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 they give their all to make a, a one of those, and that really be all they got. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, bro. You know, um, I've, and even outside, I've seen artists that didn't make a gimmick zone make a great song, and like that still be all they got. You know, like you, you, you dive deeper, and it, it don't get too much deeper than that. So I, I really think that's the real fear, bro. You are either afraid that, like I said, like we'll like your compromise more than we like your, your, your true art. Um, and that shit gets to you, bro. You know what I'm saying? I get it. Which brings me to number three. <laughs> we got tears in Before we get out here. Yeah, bro. <laughs> the third thing. Is this a numbers game, bro? Facts, yeah. So this is what many artists do regardless. Because let me, let me break it to you. A formula, when a song blows up, there's some formula that's working, that's hitting. Mm-hmm. I don't care if you try it to or not. Yeah. Yeah. So if you create 100 songs that are straight from your soul, no TikTok, no algorithm, no opinions outside of your own, right? And one of those songs blow up because they happen to hit that chord. Cool. So now you just black out. You don't care for that. You just create, 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 create until some song happens to hit that, strike that chord. And now you don't have to worry about being in your head. And I think many artists, if you look at somebody like a future, right? Like that's his mode. Okay, yeah, right? I yeah. Like he's in his bag. There are people who already like his bag, but also the songs that really hit, that was just coming from him creating, creating, creating. Mm-hmm. Right? Even a Drake put out a lot of music. Wayne, when he did all his mixtapes, right? There's a lot of artists that do that. Now, some artists don't put out as much music, but still they're creating, 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 and then what gets selected might then be like what the label decides or what they come together and strategize around. Yeah. But I still, for the most part, when I was in my mode of creating, I was not thinking about this algorithm, yeah. right? So that's the most freeing space for most of y'all. Now, again, you reconcile that, that when something does hit, it probably had some level of formula that connected for whatever it, it did at the time. Even if it felt different, there's a timing where certain songs get received differently than they might have been years prior. Yeah the pace on whatever's going on in society but those are the three routes that you can take right number one follow that algorithm to a t and hopefully you succeed off of that number two you hedge it in use it as a marketing cost where you create 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 based off of you but then you slide in an algorithm algorithmic friendly song or then three you ignore all of it right you ignore all of it but then when it's time to put things out, you consider in the marketing meetings, right? And then you allow the public to decide which one hits for them. But when you were in the studio, you were just doing you. And I know many artists, that's what they're looking for. And there's a way around that. And that's completely fine with me. So we'd love to know what y'all think. Hopefully one of these options work for y'all. If none of these work, <laughs> hey man, best of luck. I'm Brandman Shine. And I'm Corey. And we out. Peace.